Hey everyone, it's Happy Hour from Uptown New Orleans. Happy Hour is part of the family of shows on the podcast network, It's New Orleans.com. I am April Stahl filling in for Grant Morris today for our show and just wanted to celebrate today when you walk into a bar in New Orleans and pull up a bar stool, you never know who's going to be sitting on either side of you. What you do know is, no matter what they look like, what we're wearing, whether they just go out on a limo or out of jail, they're going to be happy to talk to you, because that's New Orleans, and this is Happy Hour, a cocktail-fueled 60 minutes of random conversation with folks who have nothing in common other than we're all New Orleanians in a bar. Today we're at Wayfair on Ferret Street. Wayfair is a restaurant and bar serving handcrafted food and spirits with a whole new menu and a radically new happy hour. Three hour happy hour every day from three to six. Everything is half price, drinks and appetizers. Wayfair on Ferret Street. And today we have some special guests. We have over here, Morgan Ford. She is the Yelp Community Manager for It's New Orleans. How are you today, Morgan? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here on our show. And we also have Devin DeWolf and his lovely mini ham, Marcus. He is the founder of the Crew of Red Beans, a muralist and middle school history teacher. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Welcome, Marcus. And then we also have today, we have Dana Kurtz. She's an all-American singer and songwriter. She is the female songwriter of the year in 1997 by the National Academy of Songwriters. Hello, Dana. How are you? Welcome to the show today. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. So, um, Morgan... Tell us a little bit about your, how did you get into the Yelp community and being the manager of Yelp? Um, so I definitely, very interesting path, uh, had worked for a restaurant group downtown, actually on the other side, working on the business side of getting reviews filtered in and seeing um, how those panned out and kind of sympathize with the business owners and the managers and the wait staff and got to see that and then when this position opened up I found it very interesting and a way for me to help out business owners here understand Yelp better and I just really enjoy meeting folks around our city I love business owners I love you know artists and performers and so it's been really awesome and it's been about four years now that I've been with the Yelp so that's wonderful so you're spreading all the Yelp love within this community absolutely and and helping people understand it a little bit better so yeah. yeah Mm -hmm. So what's your favorite part about working for Yelp? Um, I I definitely love meeting new business owners. New Orleans has new businesses open on the reg, like, you know, one or two a week. And I love meeting these people and their passion and better understanding that. And then getting our Yelp community to understand that as well. So that's, that's part of my job is getting those online folks offline and meeting great business owners here. So, but I love that. Wonderful. Yeah. And Dana... Hello. Hello. How long have you been a songwriter? Uh, since 1982. 1982? Yeah. How did you find that this was your direction in life? Uh, I fell in love with a songwriter. You did? <laughs> I did. <laughs> when I was 15, I fell in love with a songwriter, and I wanted to win him back when I couldn't, mm-hmm. like, you know, he didn't love me as much as I loved him. And, and I was already a musician. I was already, a, like, I was not a professional musician, but I always, already loved to play music. And I wrote songs about him to win him back. It was sort of like Lily Taylor in Say Anything. Do you know mm-hmm. the, the Joe Lies? The, the, oh, it's, a, it's another old movie reference. But um, I... I uh, it didn't work. I didn't win him back, but um, I actually kind of pissed him off, I think. But um, you won this beautiful career. But I won this career. I won this career. So there you have it. So you also, did you work with Nora Jones and Bonnie Raitt? Or did uh, you? I haven't worked with Bonnie Raitt. She said very nice things about me in public, though. And How did really you meet nice. them? Um, Nora, I knew from the Lower East Side, we were part of the whole, the, the same music scene. Like, you know, we shared band members and, you know, like the living room on the Lower East Side in the 90s was kind of just a, you know, it was just a hang and we all knew each other. And 
um, and and uh, and after she made it really really big, she actually made a point of guesting on everybody's records because she knew that she could shed a little red. Because she's like that. She's a very she's a really kind and generous person, and um, uh, and she's lovely. So we did a duet together on one of my records. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. It's a, do you guys still have a relationship now? I mean, we're friendly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She's just traveling in circles. I don't travel yeah. in. She, and she lives in New York, so you know, Where are she's you got from? a kid, a couple of kids, I think, now. Um, I'm originally from New Jersey, mm-hmm. and I've lived a lot of different places. Thank you, guys. What brought you to New Orleans? Um, I came on here on tour for the first time in 1990 and I kind of I felt I was one of those people I fell madly in love but my whole life kept me away from like I, I felt like it was the place I was supposed to live and and I kept coming back every year for more and more and more time like I you know first it was like a couple weeks added onto the tour because I wanted to hang out here and then it became more and more time, and, and, and then I, I was stuck in New York for a bunch of reasons, including career and marriage. But as soon as the marriage was over, I was I was like, okay, I'm I'm moving where I'm supposed to be, which was here. Yes, yeah, such it, a it does that to people. It does. It really that does to people. Yeah, it, it chooses you. It kisses you on the forehead and says you have to stay. Yeah. 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 Um, what about you and Marcus, Devin? <laughs> Uh, well, are you guys from New Orleans? No, not well. Marcus is from New Orleans. Uh, he was born here. Um, I actually grew up in South Carolina, and much like Dana was saying, I kind of came here on a whim. And uh, after about two days, I knew that I should live here. And now it's been about a decade, and I could never imagine anywhere else really. So I'm happy that Marcus gets to grow up here. He is Marcus is our youngest. <laughs> guest on the show today, everyone. How old is Marcus? He is six months old, and he woke up and just had this look in his eye that said, Papa, podcast. Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Smart, Marcus. You're on the path to greatness. I'm so envious he gets to grow up here. From the beginning. Yeah. To, like, did you wherever grow up here? he goes. I did. I was born here. Yeah. I'm, so I'm, every time I see children at parades and stuff, I'm just like, I can't believe you got to grow up with this. Like, I can't believe you got to grow up with this kind of magic and music in the kinda, streets. You kind of take yeah. it for granted a little bit. Like, I, I bet. I'm from New Orleans, but mm-hmm. when I was the prime age for underage drinking, about 13, I moved to Idaho. <laughs> um, I, like, I died. I was like, are you kidding me right now? Fortunately, my dad still lived down here, and I went to school up there and would come down here for the summers, which made no sense, um, But uh, and would come down for every Mardi Gras. So I kind of still lived here, but I, having been away, it makes you appreciate the city so much more. And when people kind of give, you know, people that move here a hard time and are like you're not from here where'd you go to where'd you go to school and you can't say a high school you know it's I, I kind of understand that a little bit better but I think some of the people that move here are almost better New Orleanians than some of the New Orleanians that are still that have been born here because some of them are a little bit jaded by the city so I gotta rewind you 13 is the prime age for underage drinking. <laughs> I, I was still sleeping with a light on I at 13. I literally was served my first drink, yeah. I think, at 13 and a half, 14 at port call one of the monsoons. I guess that's the oh, difference goodness. between New Orleans and every other city. Seriously. Is that I wasn't thinking about that till I could drive. I mean, kids at 16 were like, oh, my God, I'm so over the bait. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> cool. I mean, <laughs> it definitely did start young here. <laughs> Have you been to the boot or since you've been here, but have you I've, been to these bars? I've actually never been to the boot. I've driven by it many out. times. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a good thing. I live downtown, like in the, uh, I've always lived in the Marigny, Bywater area, so the boot is a little bit of a journey for me. <laughs> Pretty soon, though, little Marcus will be going yeah, to the boot. Like yeah. yeah. <laughs> my, my dream is for him to be just super snobby about alcohol by age like 14 yeah. or 13. Old to be fashions like, only. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to have like a little bell that I ring and he like makes me my drink. Oh my gosh, that's my dream. That's the only reason I want to have children. Yeah. <laughs> I used to make my dad really excellent martinis. Oh my God. It was, was like a, one of my first skills. I was the worst at gin and tonics. I, like, I, was I was like, trained. oh my God, I got my mom yeah. so drunk. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Devin, you um, are the founder of Crew of Red Beans. When did, 
how did you get inspired to begin your own crew for well, Mardi Gras? Um, basically, when I moved here, I, I picked up really quickly that costuming was very serious. <laughs> and luckily, that, that meshed with me as a person. So my first Halloween, I made a suit out of red beans uh, because I was like, well, I love red beans. It's my favorite food. And clearly, people here love them, so I'll just make a suit. Easy breezy. I thought it would take like an hour. Uh, it took about two weeks. <laughs> so what did My, this... You used only red beans. Yeah, just red beans and some rice, too. Um, my roommate at the time thought I was insane. But once I started, I couldn't stop. I had to complete it. And then when Halloween came and I wore it around town, um, people freaked out in a way that I've never really seen before, where... It was like I was a celebrity or something. People were taking my pictures everywhere. And um, then Mardi Gras came around. It was my first Mardi Gras. And I was kind of thinking, you know, uh, I've been to these second lines. I've gotten to see Mardi Gras Indians. I'm really inspired by both of those things. And in the Maroney and Bywater area on Monday, there's not a whole lot going on the day before Mardi Gras. And it just occurred to me that I could just start a parade. So I had about five or ten friends in New Orleans at the time because I had just moved here within the year. And um, I made a PowerPoint presentation and invited them over for dinner. <laughs> That's so New Orleans of you. And I was like... <laughs> I was like, guys... And there's food and wine. I mean, yeah. Well, that's how I started it. I cooked for people every week. They came to my house and I had a big... It was like Thanksgiving every week. And um, that's how we started it. And it's been ten years now. And um, it's still a neighborhood parade. I, I don't think that we're like known by everybody but um, we have a really good time on Lundy Gras and um, it's also worked out where that's how I met my wife so that's literally why oh my, my children God. exist which is kind of funny right <laughs> so you have you have two parades this year we are expanding and um, we're we're doing two parades at dead the same beans. time yeah dead beans cool. um, nice. what's the difference besides days uh, is, well, one, is that like spooky themed skeletons and <laughs> a little bit it's uh, we have these guys for eight the last nine years in the red beans parade they always made a skeleton suit and they called themselves the dead beaners and so we just kind of it felt organic if you're gonna have a spin-off to just make them the spin-off so um, the guys who created that uh, Chris and, and Mark have had a lot of fun creating this like mythology and this whole backstory of their their thing, and um, this year will be the first year that we parade as Dead Beans. Um, we've got 50 people already in the group, and there we started working on our suits about two weeks ago, uh, meticulously hot gluing beans and rice on nice. jackets and stuff. And um, it's going to be kind of interesting because the Red Beans Parade will still go on, but at the same exact time in a different part of town, the Dead Beans Parade will go on. And the two parades will meet in the Treme, which will either be ridiculously chaotic or ridiculously awesome. Um, and then, you know, after a couple of years, the Dead Means Parade will be its own thing and have its own vibe. And I'm pretty excited about that. Are you guys, like, going to toast when you meet? Like um, a <laughs> gravy toast? They, <laughs> they want to have this thing where the king of Red Beans uh, meets the overlord of the dead beans and they do some sort of bartering for the nice. souls of all the beans I like it uh, we'll see how it goes but um, it's going to be really fun and I think that's the joy of living here is where else could I possibly get hundreds of people to march around in bean suits you know <laughs> put hundreds of beans meticulously on their suits yeah so. I mean it's uh, it's so much fun I yeah the costuming like I don't know where else I could have 12 to 14 wigs and like someone actually asked for their costume box back, their chest, and so I had to take everything out. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I have no idea where I'm gonna put all this. Like it was. Everyone has. Do you have a costume closet? I just I just moved into a new place in the Bywater. Hi, neighbor. Hello. Um, and I have my first walk-in closet in my oh, entire no. life. I'm so excited. And for I you. walk in and like finally, like I had all of my Mardi Gras and Carnival costumes, and you know, and I've only been living here full time like four years and I already have like two giant rubber made tubs of, of costumes plus a bunch of other stuff that I wear 
because I'm on stage a lot that are kind of costumes anyway. And uh, and I was like, oh my god! And I put them out, and I'm like, I have a costume closet, and my wigs are on like little. Uh, I, I put up nails, and I you put up my six. So I only fun. have six. I'm new. I only have six wigs. I got like every cool year. Hanger, I'll like send you a yeah. message about the. <laughs> every year I go to Fifi Mahoney's and treat myself to one more. Yes, these are gorgeous. <laughs> I like it. It's so fun. Which one is your favorite? So far, my favorite, I have like a, a, a like cartoonishly bright fluorescent red um, beehive. Nice. That is really, it's, yeah, I, I, I kind of wear that one more than any other. Do you have any desire to be part of any crews or marching things here yourself? I do. I, I mean, the first, my first carnival parades, I was actually uh, a friend of mine who has a regular float, Dana Embry, um, and she was the queen last year, or the whatever, of the of T-Rex, nice. and I got to be her, like, assistant. Like, I got to dress up, and I wore, like, a sash, and I got to sort of help keep people away from her float, oh, yeah. you know, like, sort of like a little, like, every person Security. gets to bring another person, so I was sort of like a guest crew member. I, I would like to be a, I, 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 I'd like to be on a Marty Crew someday. It, it requires meetings and stuff, and I'm on the road all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> that's that's kind of the hard part. Like I found out, oh, there's meetings. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not good for things with meetings. Yeah. We have openings and dead beans, and you don't have to come to any meetings. You don't have to come any. Oh, okay. Well then, oh, let's talk. Because I, really, I, I don't know about the dead beans. I don't know what that's about yet. But um, I'm, I, I love your parade. I meant to tell you when I found out that was your deal. Oh, uh, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> it's really fun and. Beautiful. Beautiful and cool. Thank you. Yeah. Do you have a march? Is, does anyone march in your parade to for like music, or is it? Do they walk? Do you have floats? Um, so we have um, no floats per se, but we always have a vehicle that's covered in beans. Um, the Red Beans Parade has a 1970s Volkswagen thing that we decorated, and the Dead Beans Parade. I uh, a couple months ago went to East Texas and bought a hearse. 1969 Cadillac That's great. and we're gonna bean it. Um, unfortunately, we broke the engine trying to drive it back. Sounds like a gang thing. So it needs a new overhaul. Yeah. Uh, we got to fundraise and get a new engine, so it won't debut this year. But the coming year, that'll be a feature of the Dead Beans Parade. And um, we're sort of modeled after your uh, traditional second line. So we have uh, bands and you know the dancers that follow the bands. Um, so in our parade, the Treme Brass Band and Treme Brass Band Number no. 2, which is Corey Henry, they lead us through the Marini and the Treme. And then the Dead Beans Parade this year, we will have uh, Bon Bon Vivant and Panorama. Um, so that'll have a different vibe, a different feel. But um, it's just super fun. Uh, you know, literally, I don't think anybody's having as much fun as, as me and the other members of the crew on that particular time. You know, Monday afternoon, the day before Mardi Gras. Uh, so yeah, something we look forward to all year. Will Marcus be the crowned king for the red beans? He might <laughs> one year. Um, he will. We always have a bean suit for the little, oh the little ones. Uh, last year, my daughter had a. We made her uh, stroller into a pirate ship, and she was a pirate, little bean pirate outfit. Um, so yeah, Marcus will have some kind of skeleton suit out there this year. Nice. I'm looking forward to that parade. So is it early in the morning on Monday? It, on Monday, uh, It's uh, 2 p.m. Mm-hmm. Um, usually we end about 5 p.m. And um, I think the Red Beans Parade last year attracted around 10,000 people in total uh, who just follow us, which is pretty exciting. Um, and I have no idea how many people will come to the Dead Beans this year, but either way, it'll be super fun for us. So... <laughs> so tell us a little bit about Yelp. Like, do you any of you guys write comments or reviews on Yelp? And do you read them? I, I do read them. I am I am that creepy person that's on the site every day, um, checking out what people have to say about local businesses. Um, it's quite entertaining for the most part. Um, we do have a ton of great stuff that's mentioned about local businesses. These new businesses that come through, like I know Turkey and the Wolf just got you know best restaurant from I believe Food and Wine, and I mean they have a, a great rating on Yelp, and it's great to see the restaurants that 
people, you know, are they're getting these like higher accolades and then coming back and seeing what their their rating is on Yelp and it and it kind of matches up with that. So sometimes I see some stuff from the you know magazines that maybe are, seem a little bit off in terms of like what locals feel about the restaurants, but I think it's interesting to get that kind of average of what people and a lot of Yelp is all about you know locals and where the locals go but because we're New Orleans we find that a lot of folks you know tourists are writing reviews about these local businesses and everything and trying to get them to those other restaurants that aren't just in the French Quarter is something that I really like to try and find to do so we like to put like restaurants like Wayfair or you know restaurants down here on Farad Street on lists so that people will see that sort of thing Um, but we do we do fun stuff like we're doing a Yelp on the shelf thing coming up with local retail shops where we're making like a little Yelp doll to try and get people into local shops that are selling local wares and that sort of thing instead of, you know, buying big box and going straight to, you know, places like Amazon Prime and stuff like that. So, but even though it's convenient, uh, it's also nice to get into these stores locally. But yeah, so it's it's fun. I I love like Lionheart Prince is having their opening party tonight and I'll probably go there after this and she's amazing and just supporting those kind of businesses is just awesome and a fun way to utilize the platform. So, so where is that so people can go check it out this Lion evening? Lionheart Prince yeah. is on Magazine Street. Um, I believe she's over there by Bromart. Um, so go check her out. She's friggin phenomenal. She's a woman entrepreneur and just like kills it in what she does so go check out her grand opening party tonight um i don't know the exact times but i'm pretty sure it's right after this so but uh yeah. she's awesome in there partnering with nola couture who did um some of the design the work ties. for the nola 300 the thing ties. yeah okay they're they're pretty awesome so but uh but yeah and we're looking to see what we can do for the 300th anniversary of the city um because i know a lot of different people are doing different things um, but I'd love to figure out how to concentrate on the local performers and the service people and those folks that really make New Orleans what it is because our, our landmarks and our French Quarter and that sort of thing is great and all, but it's, it's the people that make this city. So I'm trying to figure out ways we can do that. Too. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but, um, but, yeah, it's, it's funny because I literally, the whole Mardi Gras thing that we've been talking about, it's hard not to talk about Mardi Gras come November. Like, I'm already jacked up about Mardi Gras, so, but... It makes me tense. Like, I haven't done that many Mardi Gras, and I don't have enough of a Mardi Gras wardrobe collection. Like, my first two Mardi Gras were horrible. Like, no. I, yeah, I, well, it, it was like the year before last and the year before that they were both really cold and the second one was cold and rainy Mm. and those were my first two and I was like there's just no amount of alcohol that's going to convince me I'm having a good time like it was just not fun and I didn't also I haven't been doing carnival long enough I didn't have all season clothing you know like everybody puts aside the thing they've been doing and puts on the bear suit when it's freezing out you know what I mean right (laughs) the locals know how to handle this I was wearing something kind of skimpy I was just miserable (laughs) (laughs) this is not happening and I didn't really get like I didn't get Mart like I loved carnival season and the parades that I loved but I didn't really get Mardi Gras until last year and it was the most was magical amazing. magical it was one of my peak experiences of my entire life and I'm Mine like too. oh here, yeah I like actually experienced like all out, out of, of it. body just like I was so happy and what I had did, a, what did you I, dress up as uh I it was just a mishmash of stuff. Love it. Yeah, just jewels and m- makeup and, and and pasties and just went all the way. It was really fun. Yeah, girl. <laughs> <laughs> it was super fun. It was super cool. Yeah. Sort of like a re- I was sort of like a Renaissance showgirl, basically. It was just I like weird. it. I love that. Cross King, you know, cross Henry VIII with a with a Vegas showgirl. That was yeah. kind of my look. I was like, um, I don't know if y'all have seen the video Active Wear. It's like Active wear, active wear, doing things I have active seen wear. That. It's, it's freaking hilarious. phenomenal. So I was acti- doing Mardi Gras on my active wear, and I was super comfortable. And we just went from like Napoleon to all the way to Mimi's, like just walked the whole way, getting frosés and and you know beers along the way, and saw like a like a wrestling thing going on, a pirate ship, all the things, and it was just 
amazing. And doing it with like one friend, even you can lone wolf it and just have the most amazing time ever. Yeah. Because the more people you bring along, the more you have to like deal deal with. Yeah. So, but everybody's fun. ditchable on Mardi Gras. Everyone's Everyone. Ditchable. Everyone is ditchable. <laughs> like, no, you don't want to go get that Thursday with me. Ah. The uh, the wrestling thing is my friends. Oh my gosh, they and were I've phenomenal. I've done that with them one year, and it's uh, so much fun. They were right behind the cathedral, like. Girls were just jumping in there and like wrestling. I was like, I'm just gonna watch. I bruise really easily. So, but um, but yeah, that was pretty interesting to say the least. I was like, oh my gosh. So, but um, but yeah, it's fun. I'm looking forward to Mardi Gras this year. Would you um, are, would you like to share a song with us? Sure. So I wish I had a Mardi music? Gras song. I feel like I should play something apropos, but I I don't. Um, I'm also hampered by the. I, I had a tragic, newly sharpened knife. The, the, just so you know, the knife sharpener at the um, farmer's market, the Crescent Farmer's Market uptown on Tuesdays, really, really does a great job. <laughs> like, it just took nut that a slice off the tip of my finger the other day. Um, so I'm a little limited as to what I can do, but um, I can't do any of my New Orleans songs. But I'm going to do, because you kept on saying the word king, and he's a king, and this song is called He's a King. This is a lost, this is an old lost cover from the 60s. He's a king. He's a king. He's a king, he's a king. He just thrills me so he's my favorite bow, cause he's a king. And when he walks, and when he talks, when he loves, he's a king. He just thrills me so and he whispers low, cause he's a king. He's so tall and he looks so neat. He's got the girls falling down at his feet. He's a king. Ring a ding a ding when he walks. He's a king when he talks. He just thrills me so he's my favorite bow, cause he's a king. He's a king. Ring a ding a ding a he's a king. He's a king. That was beautiful. Thanks. Where are you usually playing around town right now? Uh, I'm playing at the sidebar on Thursday. Um, I play at the sidebar, I play at Bufa's, I'm yeah. doing a gig, I'm doing, there's like a George Harrison, uh, we're doing a, the entirety of All Things Must Pass, or close to the entirety, maybe not the last disc, because nobody listens to that, um, <laughs> but we're, do <laughs> we're doing All Things Must Pass at Little Jim Saloon this weekend, I'm doing that on Saturday, I that's going to be fun, that. That's, that, that one's going to be really fun. And then, yeah, Thursday at, at Sidebar, and I just you know I play I play where they hire me. Sometimes three muses on Frenchman. So is this your full time? Is this your full time job? Or oh you yeah, do, yeah, I'm, yeah. yeah. I'm, I mostly make my money on the road. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but uh, I'm trying to make money here. That was the whole part of the point. Actually, it's one of the few places that you can make money and not have to leave home. I mean, New York used to be that, but it's not anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, and New Orleans, if you you know if you hustle, you know you can work your ass off in the high season and and not have to leave. And I'm kind of tired of touring 
relentlessly, which has pretty much been my life for the last 25 years. Yeah. So pretty much staying here. Any big plans for next year? For um, I got a record coming out in January, and I'll be I'll be touring Europe a, a bit on that. And, and congratulations! Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> What's the name of your record? It's uh, it's a live record that I did with Robert Mache, uh, who locals may know. He was in the Continental Drifters back in the day. Um, he's a guitar player. And uh, we did a live record called Here, Volume 1, and this is Volume 2. It's basically the second half, because we had too many songs, so we put it out in two separate records. Very cool. Yeah. So we'll look forward to that in January. Yeah. yeah. So you are also an artist. Um, yes, sometimes when I uh, Devin. <laughs> leave the kids <laughs> with my wife. Um, yeah, I do, I'm a folk artist, a painter. Um, it's super relaxing and fun uh, for me and um, you know New Orleans is so vibrant it's constantly inspiring me in some kind of way so so you do folk art with the inspirations of New Orleans like do you stick with houses which is very popular around here I've I've seen some of your stuff I think my friend Mally Marcina has one of your pieces oh yeah yeah. I know exactly the one Um, have you done a six cent stomper one yeah okay Um, (laughs) when I moved here one of the first uh, experiences I had was I was walking around my neighborhood in the Marigny at the time and I saw a car that was completely painted and it blew my mind and the thing was for sale and it had the phone number and it's a woman named Susan Ireland uh, who lives in the Marigny Triangle. And I called the number just because I had to, like, I don't even know what I was doing. I had to meet her, and she invited me over, and she basically said, you know, I'm going to paint a new car. I got a PT Cruiser. I'm going to paint it. I can show you how to do it. And at that moment, I was like, yes, I must paint my car. Uh, so... I painted my car. I had a redhead car, uh, and then it died. And then I bought a white truck, and I painted it. And then once I ran out of room on my truck, I just kept painting stuff. (laughs) Are you the one with the car that's painted around town that has, like, the stencils on it? No, that's somebody else. Uh, My truck has a sequin alligator on the back. Oh, I know you. I know you. You your truck? Yes. I'm fixing to paint it um, pretty soon. I'm going to repaint it. I'm not exactly sure what, but... Um, You know, that's part of the joy of living here. It's also a theft deterrent system. I tell you what, nobody's going to steal my truck Mm. uh, when it looks like that. So if anybody's... maybe they will. If anybody needs a new paint job. fast. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) We'll see who stole your truck. Or you could paint your partner's vehicle and then, you know, cheating will not occur. Ever. (laughs) So. I love your work. I love the sequins and everything like that. I think it's super cool. So. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's, I don't know. There's something about living here when you are just surrounded by the music and the art. And if you're artistic, uh, you know, intrinsically, I guess, it just, like, has to come out. And, um, you know, that's, again, why I can't live anywhere else. Do you do, you do jazz fest or any sort of sell anywhere? No. <laughs> Not really. Uh because I'm a middle school history teacher and I love that. That's, it's really um, something I absolutely love doing. Uh, though right now I'm a stay-at-home dad. So the art thing, um, part of me is I sort of would enjoy if I were a real artist, but at the same time I know that what I'm already doing is really fun. Yeah. And just, so I paint you know, a couple pieces a year or a couple murals here and there. And um, for right now, that's what I got. I think that's good not to get, like, burnout on what you love doing. So I think that's super cool. And I can just maybe steal Mallory's piece of artwork (laughs) someday. Do you participate with um, It's Where You Are? Yeah. With Catherine Todd? Yes. Yes. I'm one of their artists on their website. And um, they're super awesome. Catherine was on our show once. Okay. Yeah. I love Colin and Kat. Mm -hmm. I worked with Colin before. We worked at Living Social together. Um, We did adventures here in New Orleans. And Colin, like, she's amazing with where um, we are and stuff like that. And just another awesome woman. But that's cool that he's on there. Yeah. Yeah. Are you guys having anything come up for the holidays? Like any... 
art shows or anything that you might be participating in too? Uh, sadly, no. I'm just uh, really focused on Mardi Gras this right now um, because there's so much um, preparation that we have to do. So um, if you look on where you are, the only thing I've got really is a print uh, for sale, uh, raising money for a couple schools that flooded in uh, Houston. Um, because I'm a teacher, I sort of connected with that from the recent hurricane. Um, and uh, I've got a couple other pieces up there. But, um, you know, if people like self-taught folk art, then there's a few things that I do. <laughs> yep. They have, like, a few things, you know, because it is holiday season coming up. And there's um, a, something for artists called Raw. Have you heard of Raw? And they do... Um, I've heard of Raw. You've mm-hmm. heard of Raw? They kind of yeah. set up some things as well for artists there's some, here. There's some really great, I mean, NOLA Brewing does a great little art market thing, and the one that's over there um, by Pizza D, or maybe it's Brats, but it's in that piety little area. There, I mean, they have some really fun little art markets that are coming up, and the one over in Palmer Park is great. They really do a lot of fun stuff. We'll, we'll have a page on Yelp called Yelp Shops Local with all a listing of all the local places you can get the local crafts from people as well as the stores that have the local stuff but super this time of year is great because you really can find local gifts for people and even online you can do a couple of clicks and get it off where you are so but they're good people so the artists because obviously we have so many artists here in our community would they reach out to you somehow to if if any artist is doing something we actually did a meet the maker series in november um it was more focused towards like um food makers like uh we did something with uh, Greek Girl Pudding, um, Artemis. She's actually an artist as well. She's the one that dips the chicken in the glitter. Um, she's she's chicken ridic- and glitter. Chicken and glitter. Like you guys should definitely bring Artemis on the show. She's wonderful and amazing. Um, she does Greek Girl Pudding. We had Gourmet Fernet. A lot of more food related stuff, but Bulldog Pepper Jellies out of Baton Rouge, and that's a great gift to give during the holidays. But any local makers, if they're doing any art markets or anything we love to promote that on social media and on Yelp and just get the word out about them so that people know where to find these like awesome gifts so but that's wonderful yeah. and right now we have our photographer Allison Moon she has she is an artist as well she is with Louisiana legs workout and yoga clothes hey. and Allison like, she has at- her designs that incorporate photographic art like Mardi Gras beads Boiled crawfish, wrought iron in, Fran- in France, and caves in China. You can find Louisiana Legs on Facebook and Instagram, and you can buy Louisiana Legs on Etsy as well. So perhaps, Allison, maybe you'd have some red beans and rice for the crew oh, of red be beans, awesome. which would be a great inspiration for red beans and rice and gumbo or something like that. Perfect. So I'll, I might as well go on with some more messages. We have um, Basic Swim and Gym. It's a full range of fashion, swimsuits, workout, and yoga clothes with style. Bikinis, one-piece, cover-ups. Everything you need for beach and poolside is at Basic Swim and Gym, right next to the lingerie store Basics Underneath on Magazine Street near Jefferson Avenue. We also have the Hangover Destroyer the only all-natural product medically proven to prevent a hangover. Go to the Hangover Destroyer website at hdestroyer.com, write happy hour in the coupon code, and get 30% off Hangover Destroyer and seize the dawn. These are all great for... I feel like I need to bring all these things to Thailand with me, like the bathing suit, the hangover cure... All of it. When so. are you planning on going to Thailand? I'm going uh, in December. Um, just got married this past weekend. Congratulations. Um, super fun. Congratulations. Crazy. Um, but we, I'm glad we took the break from the honeymoon or else I wouldn't have been able to come on the show and this is really fun. Um, but we're like, let's wait till December. I'm super jacked up about it. But probably for the full moon, half moon parties, might need a hangover cure and some more bathing suits. So Definitely I'll have to check out your sponsors. So. That would be great. And yeah. maybe we'll get them on the Yelp too for yeah, the shopping sure. <laughs> portion of... Absolutely. Congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate it. Now I'm going to start making babies. 
Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, this Saturday, we, we got married at Felicity Church. Um, they're amazing folks over there and just had a bunch of really cool vendors. Like, Two Girls, One Shuck was there, and um, the band where you're at, like, freaking killed it, and I love them with all my heart. Um, but we had a, and Saber Catering, all these folks were just amazing and a lot of great friends there, and no, no big, no big bad things happen or anything <laughs> like that, but it was, it was pretty fun, but, um, but yeah, and all my family has basically moved away from New Orleans since, and so it was really nice having everybody be able to come back to New Orleans. I'm not going to get too into it, but it's just, it's nice having them be able to come back home. My dad moved to Houston after the storm. Like I said, my mom's still, now she's in Iowa, so if you say, hey, how's your mom in Idaho or Iowa, like either or works. Um, but yeah, it's, they love coming back home because just like you guys, how you feel New Orleans is part of who you are, like that's never going to leave them and it's it's nice that they get to come home and experience that again so, yeah so yeah so you had a traditional new orleans wedding i didn't we didn't do a second line we did like i made a bunch of jellyfish cuz i like diving and stuff so i made jellyfish instead of second line umbrellas and they were glowing and everything and it worked out pretty well but uh, but yeah it was it was it was the tits. It was fun. It was fun. So. Where do you dive? Um, That's interesting. I know. I, I'm i scared shizless of diving, um, but we dove in Costa Rica and Belize, where he proposed, and some other places, but it's amazing, and we're going to be able to dive in Thailand. Fingers crossed. I want to see some whale sharks and not other sharks, really, but I'm excited about that, so... Oh, yeah. How long fun. are you guys going for? Um, we're going for two weeks, um, Bangkok, and then hanging out down in the islands and doing all the water things. So it should be amazing. Um, if anybody wants to give me any more tips about Thailand, have you been? To I'll Thailand? definitely take them. I haven't. I really want to go. Like Thailand and Vietnam are really high on my I, list. Vietnam. Yeah. My friend went there and was like, it was amazing. Yeah. They like rode around on these tiny little scooters and stuff. So. I want to rent a bicycle and like bike around. Yeah, I think that would be pretty awesome. Vietnam so. for like two weeks. Yeah. I, I think, I feel like this is the time to do it. Once, once we start having little minions and whatnot, I feel like it's not going to be as easy. So to go to Thailand, I don't know. Have you traveled with the minions? <laughs> well, I was, was going to vouch for that. <laughs> um, we travel with our kids because my wife's family is from Belgium. Oh, wowzers! So we go to Belgium every two years, and That's um, crazy. yeah, the I don't even know if this is a good story to tell, but we flew to Italy, um, and my daughter could not sleep at all through the flight. It was like you know, 14 hours of travel, oh my gosh. and by the end of it. All I could do was just hold her and sing to her. We have like kind of a theme song. And she was so exhausted and just her diaper just malfunctioned at that moment. And she just <laughs> she just peed everything out. And so I arrived in Italy, which is like the most fashionable country. And I was like haggard and had like bloodshot eyes with giant circles around my eyes. And I had been peed on. And I'm... <laughs> I'm in, like, the line for immigration and customs, you know, getting into their country. I'm like, hello, fashionable Italians. I have arrived. I'm here for your country now. I smell like pee. I, I smell like wanna, pee. What's the theme song? Designer yeah, diaper. No, like, yeah, let's, let's hear a performance. Let's hear the theme song. Well, uh, both of my children have theme songs that uh -huh. have naturally developed. So this one goes out to my daughter, Annika. Um, Bouncy, bouncy girl, bouncy, bouncy girl, bouncy, bouncy girl, ba ba ba, bouncy, bouncy girl, bouncy, bouncy girl, bouncy, bouncy girl. So if there's ever a moment of catastrophe, well thank you. Um, <laughs> wow. Ever since she was like two or three months old, that song has just worked like magic. Uh, I don't know why, but it's every it's kid, very every kid has a theme song. Yeah, yeah. Devin, I have to ask, do you eat French fries with mayo in your household? Yes, and my wife makes her mayonnaise from scratch. And that sounds good. if you've ever had homemade mayonnaise, you never go back. You will take anything else and that's throw it on the floor in disgust. Um, that's how she wooed me, her homemade mayonnaise. <laughs> so hot. 
And the Belgians are so funny because uh, they have this supersti uh, superstition that once you reach a certain age, you like can't make it anymore. And so they just like stop. And then the younger people have to make the mayonnaise. Oh, what age is that? At what age are you no longer? Is it, is it I, I think it's down. I think yeah. it's like sixty, ish. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the mayonnaise. Oh my god, homemade mayonnaise. Is she Flemish? Yeah. She's Flemish, not French. Yep. yep. And um, yeah, so we're mayonnaise snobs and we're beer snobs, and I feel pretty lucky to have married into that because I'm like, hmm, delicious beer, delicious mayonnaise. I could do this thing. Dude, European passport. That too, yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Killer. These days, that's especially valuable. Yeah. Yeah. Robert's Robert's Ecuadorian, so I've got that. Oh, so nice. I can just do that. I can just escape to Ecuador. I need to learn the language first. I, mean, oh, I worked Ecuador on Duolingo. Dope. I love. I did it's a. I did a. Fun. I did a festival in Ecuador. Where, did you, in, where in was Quito. it? Oh, yeah. In Quito. I haven't been to Quito yet. His family's from Guayaquil, but I okay. hear Quito is absolutely beautiful. It's so beautiful, and the people are so cool. It was yeah. such a good gig. I was like, I gotta go back. Man, yeah. This is beautiful. We're definitely. I think we're going to make a trip sometime next year. I got to go like to the Galapagos uh -huh. with this family. Wow. I'm like, never did I think this would ever happen. I tripped <laughs> over a seal. I was, I was not <laughs> tripped over a totally seal. sober. <laughs> and Robert's like, there's seals everywhere. I was like, I know. And I tripped over one. And it's like, Ooh. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> like, they were everywhere. So, but, um, but yeah, Ecuador is pretty fans but I will take your wisdom of maybe not bringing babies on 14 hour flights and but you know it's what people do so more power to you, you. you can't help it you just gotta yeah. give people cookies around you all the cookies do you, you just do that is that what you do oh yeah like, I, you bribe on the I've plane never yeah I'm, I'm a frequent European traveler and nobody has ever bribed me because they brought their children on the plane never yeah well I, no. I try to nobody. win people over with food that was really that's, that's really a smart. really brilliant idea I'm gonna ask next time my baby's on the plane be like do you have cookies yeah. <laughs> this would help me or Bloody Marys yeah <laughs> that's always good too Bloody Marys okay um Dana, would you like to close with us and we could play one sure. more beautiful song of sure. yours? I was actually I thinking that there like there was no way to segue into like into the like one of the few songs I can actually play with this finger. Um, except we brought up Ecuador and Venezuela is like right there and, and this song's called Venezuela so I'm like oh, oh so we're excited. just gonna finish this damn thing in South America. Marcus is excited too. <laughs> Zam's up, he's ready. All right, it's called Venezuela. It's about a dream I had. That was such a lovely dream. The streets were golden in the sun. I'd never been to Venezuela, but my family was all there. And my mother looked so young Venezuela looked like Brooklyn Though the streets were twice as wide Children spun around the trees Little tops, little Sufis Mama smiled from inside Oh, Fernando, I'm so sorry For the love you saved for me But my heart is locked forever In another That he's loved me all his life He said he knew that I'd come here He's been waiting all these years And I'm meant to be his wife And my sister was so jealous Of the love saved for me 
She left stomping across the square Bridget arms and flying hair Her skirt had many layers And it bounced like Sandra Dean's Oh, friend, oh, I'm so sorry Whatever could I say so plainly He was such a formal man Handed to me like a daisy In the presence of my family From his damp and shaking hand He said, Fernando, I can't stay here And a clock began to chime And I opened up my shirt And in its bony cage Picked a paper valentine Oh, Fernando, I'm so sorry For the love That song gave me chills. Yeah. I have to give a quick shout out to one of the Facebook live viewers. Dana, she's a fan of yours. Rebecca Shane Wolf, she says, this is one of my favorite songs by you. Aww. And that she's going to catch one of your shows northeast. She's in the uh, New York, Connecticut area. Hi, so, Rebecca. Shout out to Rebecca. I love that. Do you, is this from, um, like, how were you inspired by this song? Did you... Is this from someone that This you... was literally a dream top to bottom. I just made it rhyme as best as I could. It was like a lucid, a really kind of, you know, you ever have a lucid dream, like a dream where you knew you were dreaming and it felt kind of powerful because yeah. you were sort of half awake. And I dreamt that I woke up in Venezuela and this man I've never met before Fernando. told me he's been waiting for me his entire life and he's been watching me grow up and he's been waiting for this moment because he knew I was coming to his dream and we were meant to be married. And... And at the time, I was already married to somebody else, but it was a dream, so I kind of forgot it for a little while. And yeah. then at some point, I was like, oh, shit, I'm already spoken for. i got to break this guy's heart. Because in the dream, I was getting all caught up in it. It was really handsome. And <laughs> Do, you Do you have any family in Venezuela? Like no, in, no, 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 like, no. I'd never been. That's crazy. No, no, I'd never been. And so, but I knew it was Venezuela because it was my dream, you yeah. know, because when you're there, you just know. And, and I thought it was really real, and I woke up, like, really affected and feeling 
pretty horrible. Like, I felt guilty. Like, I was like, this guy's yeah. been waiting for me. You should yeah. go get, like, a palm reading and know, see right? if they tell you anything. Every time I play in a Spanish-speaking country, some guy comes up to me and says, my name's Fernando. You're like, oh <laughs> <laughs> they have, like, astral projection when you have yeah. those types of experiences yeah. in your dream. That's I, I, I've beautiful. always wondered, yeah. I kind of always wondered, honestly. That's so, yeah. so most of your songs come from your dreams some of no them. no mm-hmm. only a couple there's that de- it's definitely happens i'm more i'm a prolific dreamer i'm one of those people kind of always remembers my dreams i, I have a lot of dreams too I, get, yeah. I wake up and i'm so mad at my now husband i'm like yeah. what you did this and yeah. he's like Morgan, <laughs> fuck off. But, uh, yeah i think that's cool though when you start to understand that you're in the dream and then yeah. you can kind I of love manipulate lucid it. dreams yeah. usually lo- like lucid dreams what was I, I i lucid dream occasionally but I've never lucid dreams and an, lucid dreamed an entire story like that. Usually, yeah. at some point in a dream, I realize that I'm dreaming, and then I make myself fly every time, yeah. every single I'm time. Like, lift off. Yeah. I know. Yeah, it yeah. is so fun. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, it, and, and this was just a completely different animal, which makes me like there, it was. It was really. It was very. It was a really beautiful and very disturbing, upsetting kind of dream. Honestly, like I really like. I woke up very disoriented. I was in Spain and I was jet lagged, which might be part of. The disorientation, but um, I but that was one of the. It was the only time a, a, a full dream caused a song like that. I still feel that song throughout my whole body. Oh, like, that's it's lovely! Just Thank you. Vibing all over. <laughs> it feels so good. It's like oh. cool. And Marcus, Marcus, Marcus digs it. Marcus digs this. Song. He's like, stop! Don't stop singing. I love it. Well, I wanted to thank all of you guys for being on our show today. Morgan, thank you from Yelp. And all of you guys that are out there, please feel free to send an email to be a part of sure. the Yelp community. It's neworleans at yelp.com if anybody wants to reach out. So That's great. Thank you so much. And um, Devin, did you have any last words for our show today? <laughs> or I was just reminded of the time I was dreaming that there was a stray cat in my room. And in my dream, I jumped to catch the cat, Mm -hmm. and I woke up on the floor about 10 feet away from my bed. (laughs) Whoa! (laughs) I wonder what Marcus's dreams are like right now. What are baby dreams? I wish I the wish we knew what they giant were. Giant boobs, like you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> probably. <laughs> probably. Pro- that's probably very accurate. <laughs> Mountains. That's, that's also a adults' dreams as well. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you so much, yeah. Dana, for our being here and for sharing this beautiful moving music. And where can people find you again this week that they can um, play at the local? S- or- yeah, I'm playing at the Sidebar on Thursday at uh, 8.30 with Robert Mache, and that's going to be really fun. Robert and I have been separated for a little while, and so it's been a couple months since we've done a show together, so we're excited. And, uh, and then Saturday, I'm at Little Gym with uh, George Harrison, All Things Must Pass. And that's tribute. during the day. That's for brunch, that's the evening. isn't it? It's no, evening? I think, I don't, you know what? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, we'll look it up. It's, it's a, it, there, there is a Facebook. <laughs> I, I've shared it already on my Facebook page. So if you go find my sh- Facebook page, you can find the George Harrison tribute. All things must pass. Mark Stone is putting it on. He's the coordinator. Awesome. Yeah. So I think you guys can all find everyone that's on the show today on their Facebook pages mm-hmm. and or at their websites when you go and tune in for our show today. And so thanks to all you guys again for being here. Thanks, Allison, for your pictures. Um, Thank you. Over here, I'd like to share uh, our credits today to shout out at producer Graham DuPont, our associate producers, Allison Moon, and me, April Stahl, filling in for Grant Morris today, our music director, Christian Unrah, our music producer, Jean Valois, Technical director Thomas Walsh, engineer today by Joe Schreiner. Facebook live feed director is Asher Griffith. Fact checker and social media connector Andrew Sorak. Theme music was written by and is being played by Mitch Foreman. If you'd like to be on the show, drop us a line. Our address is on our website. Check out our other happy hours and other shows. Out to lunch with Peter Raschuti, live at Commander's Palace and Louisiana Eats with Poppy Tooker. 
You can also find other great Louisiana podcasts at itsacadiana.com and itsbatonrouge.la. Keep up with us on Facebook, Twitter, and a bunch of other time-sucking social media on all of the We Are It's New Orleans. You can find photos from this show on itsneworleans.com and our Facebook page. The photos are taken today by Allison Moon. If you're listening to this on your podcast app, thanks for subscribing. Take a moment to rate and review us. That helps other people to find us. Recorded live today at Wayfair on Ferret Street in Uptown New Orleans. Happy Hour is a production of INO Broadcasting for itsneworleans.com. For Andrew Duhon, everyone around the table here at Wayfair and back at our office in INO Broadcasting, thanks for joining us. I'm April Stolf for April Love on Facebook, and I'll see you back here next week for more Happy Hour. Heads up, denim lovers. Old Navy's biggest denim sale ever is here. All jeans are on sale up to 60% off. Styles start at just $12 for adults, $8 for kids. Plus, this Saturday and Sunday only, don't miss the Gina Day giveaway. Want a free pair of Old Navy's all-new jeans? Stop in for your chance to win and for up to 60% off all jeans. Now at Old Navy. Valid 916 to 924. Excludes in-store clearance. Five per day per store. Select styles. Jean giveaway in-stores only. See stores for details.